Hello everybody, welcome back. We've got game two of the WPC Dota 2 action coming your way between Orange and Hyper Glory team. Orange, shockingly, take game one with a hell of a comeback. I don't even call it a comeback. It was just like all of a sudden they won the game. Like HGT were up four Raxes, they lose one fight, CTY throws, and then suddenly Orange have taken counter Raxes, they win a base race, and the game's over. Like it, it, Comeback implies it was like a gradual, they turned around what was a HGT lead, but there was nothing gradual, it was just all of a sudden... Bang. Lead was lost. Game was over. HGT loses it all. But we've got ourselves game two now between HGT and Orange Esports. We're going to co-caster join me in a second. They made it into the lobby. I think they're just getting a quick drink and to be joining me in just a second. It's none other than my good friend Slash. But uh, he's going to be just quickly getting a drink and hopefully joining me momentarily. But game two, Orange Esports and uh, Hyper Glory team. We can see Orange Esports there in the booth. These guys are going to be so happy. They travel a long way. Uh, to get to China and uh, take on some of the best teams in China. And definitely a team that Orange that we're not really expected to do too well. Uh, we're not really expected to make these kind of upsets. But here they are, winning the first games against Hyper Glory Team. And we'll see what Hyper Glory Team can do to respond in game number two. Slash, are you with me now? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm all good. That's good to hear, Hold man. On. Oh, the game's already started. Well, well. That's okay. I I just did my intro. I, I you haven't missed out on much. You missed oh, well, you missed that's, an invoker that's pick. That's all. Well, that's not much of a surprise, I suppose. But yeah, I was watching game one as well. It was a it was a clowny game, and uh, I would just say typical CTY. I think his venture into League of Legends didn't really change his play style. He's no. just <laughs> <laughs> He's... that was uh, yeah. I don't know um, suboptimal item choices, I suppose, and decision making. Yeah, but... never getting the life still up, and like he's like the tr he's like the true definition of a pub star player. Like amazing individual mechanical skill, but just doesn't have that like greater game sense to make the good decisions as far as items go, as far as just battle selection goes. He made some really costly mistakes that game. Yeah, it's um, it absolutely true. At, at the same time, though, I have to kind of. Um, in a way, it was also XTT's fault. He played. They had a Darkseer Sankin combination, which was really, really powerful. But we never really saw it happening vacuum with the Boros Strike. So that was um, a huge, I think, also huge mistakes by XTT overall in the game because none of the heroes on Orange's side had a BKB apart from the Invoker. Like Invoker had it quite late as well. So yeah. there were so many possibilities with it. Just I know he didn't go for BKB either. I think he just go blink BKB and just vacuum for people and team fights one suddenly so it's not just cty i think just no. overall the uh, hdt were just i don't know they were they were making some really really weird decisions i think Sank that is that is that like sanking was, was missing stuns left right and center like everyone yeah, was just like true. playing really poorly it felt like absolutely yeah it was it was uh it was very it's, it's a shame to see i mean because they were destroying orange in the early phase just with a mechanical skill but well, that was just typical cty i still remember that i can't forget the one game where he I think he played uh, Obsidian Destroyer, or, well, Outworld Devourer, and um, I think it was against Yamate where he completely destroyed him on lane and was, I think, the fattest, by far the fattest hero on the whole map and then just decided to go for really weird items and throws. So, yeah. yeah. Well, HGT, they go for the Sand King once again. Um, normally, I actually see pretty hard playing the hero, but... Uh, Last game was S and pretty always playing the Mirana. Um, still just a very, very good hero overall. Um, interesting that they ban out the Trend Protector, though. I'm not quite... I don't think the Trend was the, the biggest key factor in, in Orange's win. Um, no. So, it didn't have that I big of an impact. It was like it was a nice little pick as far as like the early gank. Like, he did some nice early ganks when he got his boots up, but as far as the mid to late game, like the overgrowth never really had that big of an impact. Even against BKB hero, like BKB SF in a rage naked, it never actually did that much it felt like because sf just when he's entangled he would just throw the record with souls off yeah it's uh it's absolutely true i mean and th i think they picked up the dark sea afterwards which was really good so they had a good counter to the trend and to be honest i mean boots first trend ganking sf mid it could have been any other support hero. I mean, yeah it would have been a vs it would have been the same same thing so it would have died nonetheless um doesn't make much of a difference. So the trend ban, and I don't know about it. it. I don't think it's particularly good. And we do see Ember Spirit being picked up by Orange. So let's see if uh, HGT have a way of dealing with that hero. Um, 
I don't know. It's uh, it's most likely going to be CTY and Volca, and I do know that he plays a hero really well. Same as his SF. I mean, SF is basically a signature hero, but still, just going for weird item choices doesn't really help the game. It's it's not a one we one solo championship, so yeah. it's a team game. Does he play more like the Exalt style in Volca, would you say, or is it like... He tends to, yeah. He tends yeah. to play Exalt more yeah. than, than he does Rex. I suppose it just scales better into the late game, that's why he likes yeah. it. Um, yeah. But, Unless you yeah, have like a clear strategy around the Quaswex, we don't see as much Quaswex invoker nowadays in general. I think. I think I think it's a shame. I still think I like Quaswex better because I think it's just more versatile and Exort kind of cripples you in the early phase if your team doesn't have enough disables. Um, like I I personally prefer Quaswex, but I do yeah. see why Exort is really strong. I mean, it's a better it's a better if you get a good start it's it snowballs a lot faster than quad wax and you can push towers faster so it's fine wraith king ban i don't know about it i think i, I don't even think the hero is that strong but he's become just, super uh, ig of first picking this hero man i know, I know. <laughs> like, people are making jokes about it um People are making jokes about, you know, IG picking Wraith King because it's the O that Lua is going on because if he dies, he's still useful. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's kind of harsh, but yeah. still, it's, in, in a way, it's not entirely untrue. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Um, HET go for the ZSMJ Weaver. I, here I know he plays really well as well. So, um, yeah. I, st I don't know, were you the one casting the game where he went like, Five BKBs, yes. three divine rapiers. That yeah. was like one of the first games where he was he was he came back and was playing carry like for this team. One of the first games I saw of them was that game there on him on Weaver, and it was it was a crazy game. Yeah. Oh, well, we do see Night Stalker pick up orange. Orange to get uh, really aggressive with this, like Night Stalker, yeah. Marana, Ember Spear. Like they want to just control the early to mid game, and this is where the Exod Invoker can really be punished. It feels like. I, I like Night Stock a lot. I just like the concept of the hero. It's like the only hero who is just, you know, who functions with daytime, nighttime. So, I mean, I suppose with the new patch, Keeper of the Light is also in that category. But uh, Night Stalker is just kind of a fun hero, I think. Just overall, the concept of the hero is really nice. The thing is, he's once again, he's a snowball hero. If you, if you don't get anything done in the first two nights, the hero kind of pales off. You don't farm very well. He just becomes a really tanky creep with... Um, well, if he has Agonims, he's got Vision, so, so as far as he's still useful, but um, he pales off quite quickly in late game, but I really like the hero, um, yeah. HTT go for the Chen pick, it's also not much of a surprise. Um, S tends to play junglers a lot, so Enchantress is banned out, well, just go for the next one. The yeah. next best jungler, I suppose, go Chen. Yeah. Um, also, decent pickup. The thing is, um, which just reinforces my theory that the CTY is going to go exit in order to push harder with, with Chen creeps as well. So uh, hopefully we see HET actually playing a bit more aggressive and pressuring a lot more. I mean, last game it was they, they applied sort of passive pressure by just out farming Orange, but still it was nothing decisive really, which is a bit of a shame. I feel like it's kind of hard to apply a lot of pressure with their heroes so far. Like Sand King's not, like with a Chen smoked up, maybe you can get some ganks off, but... It's not the easiest ganking combo. The Weaver's not... I mean, the Weaver's a good laning here, but he's not going to do much more than that, so... Yeah. Uh, we do... Uh, uh, yeah, Invoker Exhort also kind of helps the Weaver. I mean, yeah. And Orange Banner, the Clockwork, also very very obvious ban, in my in my opinion. It's, yeah. um, it's, it, sets, it sets up Sunstrike nicely. HTT, I'm lacking the offlaner so far. Centaur's been banned out, so... Yeah. Probably um, see maybe just another Darkseer pick. Oh, actually, HTT banned the Darkseer themselves, so... Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I don't see why they sh would ban him out, really, yeah. but still. Um, maybe it's because they can't really zone zone the Darkseid too much because they have Chen in the jungle and yeah. Sand King is, uh, is a melee support. So I think that's probably why they banned the Darkseid. Yeah, just in the, in the bigger picture, Darkseid, yeah, I don't think Orange would were even considering picking him up. But still, how many? No, I'm just thinking which offlaner is still left um, that you can't play i suppose i mean bounty on this yeah. still a vibe he's been pick. playing lots of axe but this is not really like a good offline axe game by any means yeah, well, they have a chen i mean you can't really go offline axe i mean yeah. he's just gonna get massacred i think if, you, yeah. if they go offline axe. I agree. you you need the axe like with like a like axe dazzle and then you do like a safe lane yeah. solo weaver but... exactly yeah like i don't know you're all tight oh yeah that's actually really oh, good yeah. pick. This Tide, is... Tide is actually becoming back in popularity as well. It's a, it's a really good hero. I mean, they have some scary teamfight at the moment. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, 
I'll be right back in like 20 seconds. I just really need to get my tea. <laughs> okay. I, I could do for some tea slay. So. Good. Bring, bring some back for me as well while you're at it. No, uh, all right, no problem. We got ourselves a game one draft, or well, game two draft complete. Orange took game one, and we're going to see game two. Well, in the hands of the uh, Yasir Ember Spirit, one of his better heroes. Um, we'll see Shocks playing the, it looks like a Farming Marana. This, this is going to be a sub, no, it's, not, it's support Night Stalker? What? Insidious is normally the support player for this team. We're gonna we're gonna have to wait and see if this is actually the case because Shox was that crazy weaver from last game. I I don't believe mm -hmm. that this is gonna be a a support night stalker, but I could be wrong. We'll find out soon enough. That's for uh H E T. Pretty standard stuff from them. It's the ZSMJ Weaver we're talking about. Tide going into the off lane and everything else and... that comes with that. Yeah, and I'm back. I it seems to me that you just made the player introductions on each hero, so yep. Pretty much. That's a positive thing. Um, CTY actually picking up Quas on level 1. Um, you see, he can still transition, I suppose, into Exod later, but I don't know. Um, going for Naltalus, man, tends okay. to... You probably need a bit more last damage if that's if you're going for Wax on level 1. The, so. the weirdest thing, though, is this a support Night Stalker? Insidious is the support player. He played Trent last game, and here he is on Night Stalker. Uh, okay. So, which is the other core? Are they running Socks, Mirana core? Socks, Socks, Socks is the carry. Is, okay. He played Weaver last game. Ooh, they oh, okay. Oh, it's gonna connect, actually. Oh my god. This is... Mm. This That's first blood. first blood. Yeah. Yeah. First blood. Well, in maybe faith. it wasn't the best idea to just put the Sand King in front. And first blood picked up by the Emperor. So, is gonna to have battle. a fantastic time mid lane. He went for the poor man's shield starting item. So, he was gonna have a slow bottle until he gets that first blood. His bottle's gonna be coming up really fast now. That is actually, yeah, it's it's the um, Mushi build basically. He always goes for command shield on yep. on uh, Ember Spirit when he when he plays in mid. Okay, well, so that's... what are lanes? What, what are we what are we looking at here? Winter's normally off lane with Shocks playing carry, and Sidious is going to be a p potentially support the night battle stalker. Battle begins. <laughs> support night. I don't know how that's supposed to be working out. Yeah. I mean, night stalker really is is a heavy level dependent hero. Not not. Too much item event, I guess he's kind of tanky already, Illusion. but still he needs levels desperately and AA as well. So I don't know if that's gonna work. If this works out, I think it's just gonna hurt HG's morale a lot. I mean, guys, we just got owned by a support Night Stalker. It I should mean, not work. Sound. Night Stalker should not work as a support, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's weird. It's the shenanigans. I don't know. All right. Well. well We'll find out soon enough, but uh, for now, uh, let's do the initiation bottom lane. Winter gonna get stunned up. He has got the stout shield and plenty of regen, so I don't think we'll be seeing a kill here. But yeah, just zoning him out of the lane as much as possible. Yeah, it's uh, it's just some cheap harassment. It doesn't really cost him anything. I mean, he has. Does he have clar Why doesn't he have clarities? <laughs> okay, never mind. He doesn't have any clarities. So one more burst strike and you can go back to base, I suppose. Yeah, uh, that's actually quite problematic for the sand king. <laughs> just what? Why does he do that if he doesn't have any clarities? I mean, okay. Chen, Chen, is, Chen is one. Maybe he takes the Chen. Oh, they're gonna go for a okay, they smoke. Of smoke. Right, uh, Winter is in a very good position. Wow. Wait, what? The support Night Stalker. <laughs> I, I completely missed that. Good work, man. Yeah, I missed it as well. I was Night Stalker smoke. coming into play here. The smoke is going bottom lane, though. That's Winter they want from that. It yeah, should I be think... a kill, but. I think they can dive him easily with yeah. the Centaur in front. It's, it's just, just an offlane go... like Elder Tide though, so it's not like a, a crucial kill. I don't think they're even going to get a tower off this. There's a Burrow Strike, the Sentinel stun to follow. Winter will go down in the end here, but ZSMJ takes quite a bit of damage. They can get a T1 tower, tower as well. It's a nice little pickup, but getting this T1 tower, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think they're going to get it, <laughs> really. It it's, is... uh, like, if you see teams like Alliance play it, they always go for the gang get around the 3 minimark where the Catapult creep comes in. And yeah. Then they can push. CSMJ taking heavy, heavy damage. He doesn't have a south, <laughs> which kind of sucks, I structures are fortified. Got mass tangos, which... Tangos are slightly more cost-effective than, than the, the south, so... I guess yes. that, that point of view is slightly better, but... Gee, pretty hard now taking tower hits. They're just tanking this tower left, right, and center. Yeah, pretty hard needs to go back to base. He doesn't have any mana, he doesn't have any yeah. HP. He just go back to base. It's not, nothing to do with that. I think Gen it's not... I mean, it's nice to get a, get a kill on the... Yeah. Elder Titan, but sticking around after it and just doing some chip damage to the tier one was not really worth it, I think. No. So maybe once to stack a neutral camp on his way out, yeah, because this, this big camp can be stacked in a second. But 
It also depends if Chen, Chen may just want to grab it himself, so. Uh, the start, I feel like this is a good start for Orange. Like, they lose Winter at bottom lane, but that's a pretty inconsequential kill. There's no tower to follow up. It's just a bit of gold, and the amount of damage HET took to get that kill made it almost not worth it. Yeah, that's absolutely... I completely agree with you. And Pretty Horse still... I know he didn't go back to base. He's running around at the moment, not doing anything productive. This is just bad support movement. He's, he's got a, he he's got a fire strike now, at least. To, yeah. He, still, it's, he's, he's been spotted by the ward, so it's yeah. very, very unlikely that he's going to get something done. Once again, Ancient Camp's blocked out, they know it's happened, they know it, but they don't have a sentry ward based on so... Maybe he just goes with the Tide Hunter, who's also in the jungle. I mean, they currently have like three jungling heroes. The Sand King is in the jungle with Chen and Tide Hunter, which is just completely unproductive. Yeah. No, HGT just seem very unclear about what they want to do here. They haven't got another smoke to go ganking with. They've got just a level one bar strike. They're making their way down bottom lane. So Winter will spot this. Oh, it hasn't got a ward here, so he doesn't spot this out just yet. But he should be playing pretty carefully regardless against the Sand King Chen who are constantly missing. Yeah, he's got boots though. He's got boots out shield. He's not that easy to kill at the moment. So... Yeah. And once again, it's CTY, he, is too, he does transition into the exile build on mid, and he's once again winning mid lane. <laughs> it doesn't matter which hero you give this guy, he just wins mid yeah. lane. But. I mean, this is like definitely an advantageous matchup against the, the Ember Spirit, but Gank coming in now, Night Stalker's here, it's night time. Radiance this is level 3 on the Night Stalker, they want to go and CTY, they've got 2 points in the Searing Chains, they are going to go and CTY with this one, the Void to follow, and CTY are going to be okay gonna... though. Yeah, they, they kind of stacked it, they, they stacked yeah. the slow and the Searing Chains. So that's why they didn't get it, which is a bit of a shame, but still won some nice pressure there on CTY. He's got two points in Qua, so it still takes quite some time before he can regen back up to full HP. A bit so, unusual also him Dyer's going for the face on an Exhaust. Now ganking but... the Tide here, the support roaming Night Stalker. There's a Star on the follow, there's your chilling touch damage, and XTT, no way out of that one. Leaps out tires. just to avoid some tower Radiant damage. Top tower under one bottom lane, XTT doing some nice decent pressure. They get a Barrow Strike off on Winter, but immediately yeah, they're coming it. in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. you're right. The Zero shows up, gets a Searing Change on S, that's a dead chance. God give it. Yep. God Come on, XTT, stop ah. feeding. Oh, this tower yes. will be down in Deny range, we'll see if the Weaver can get the last hit, or if the Seera will be enough to get the Deny. Evan watching. Uh, he's gonna get Dyer's it. Bottom yeah. tower That's has been so denied. bad. 4 2 1. They have a Night Slugger. There isn't Orange in a way because they run support Night Slugger. have a greedy lineup. And they're still winning early game against a team with a Chen. So that's not supposed to be happening. At the moment, it just looks really, really bad for HCT. Yeah. They actually put the Night Slugger mid to, to get in some more levels. Well, I, I like this. Uh, Ysira can roam around a bit. He's level 6, so he can actually gank, although I feel like Ember Spirit also needs... He, level 6 isn't enough for an Ember Spirit. He needs more items, more farm, more levels. Sunstrike mid almost yep. gets a kill on the Night Stalker, but... Radiant's really nicely played, but still, attack. it's not quite enough. Night Stalker's so tanky, and Stout Shield doing work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One less Stout Shield proc and he dies there. He survived on 15 HP, so... Ysira will come back mid, and I think this is fine, because I think Ysira does need to get like his level 8, level 9, etc. Like, he can't just be roaming around as a level 6 Ember Spirit for the next 5 minutes. Yeah. It's just overall, I don't know, it isn't... Because of night time, it's very dangerous for HTT to kind of do something. I mean, it's gonna be there for the next 2 minutes as well. Night Soccer's level 4, he doesn't, doesn't actually go for the silence. Which I would have expected him to do as wow. a support Night Stalker, yeah. but... Too passive. Hey. Sure, but I mean, I guess he runs a lot faster, so and deals some more damage. But still, I think the silence would have been really nice in some of the heroes. Yeah, ganking. I mean, ganking, sanking, ganking, uh, and <laughs> even like an invoker, or we weaver, especially. I mean, I don't think yeah, they're going to exactly. try and kill the weaver right now, but mm. later on, it we'll... looks like they're just leaving leaving the weaver to free farm and thinking, well, they they still have a dual core lineup with Mirana and Ember Spirit, and should be able to. It. I mean, Sox doesn't have the same amount of last hits as ZSMJ, but he has a kill to his name. And top lane, once again, they, they go for the dive on XTG, and yeah, this okay. Tide Hunter is just, once again, a really, really dead fish. They've got the ward now behind the tier 1 tower to help out, but hey, they did that without that sun. Oh, Ooh. it's just narrowly misses on the AA. He gets away. And he's... CTY just not finding the kills. I mean, you can't really blame him for missing Sunstrike, but some games you hit him, some games you don't, and this is a game where I feel like he really needs to be hitting them. Give HGT a chance. Yeah. Oh man. The... This and mid lane they go for the dive again. Yeah. I mean this is spirit forwarding CTY, so they have full vision of him. 
Oh, they run the sanking. Cold Snap's there. Misses the Centaur stun, unfortunately. There will be a Moonlight Shadow now as well. I don't think there's any detection up at this stage. It's too early for detection. Nice talk, we're going to do some body blocking. It's ne it's ne it's never too early for detection, man. Right? Yeah. Supposed, you're playing against a Marauder, you're supposed to have some well, form of... When you're, when you're this far behind early on, it's like you, you haven't got the money for sentries almost, it feels like. Sanking, <sighs> Sanking. Oh, Sanking, holy crap, he's got 600 gold? Pretty horse. Got all this money out of nowhere. I suppose okay. he's been taking most of the farm in the jungle from yeah. the Chen. Poor well, Chen. Look at, look at the Chen, look at the Chen, he's level 3. And just boots. <laughs> it's, it's kind of sad. Yeah, Chen. This Chen has like zero impact so far. You see Putting a lot of pressure on ZSMG down the bottom lane with a haste room, but. Looks like he's not going to commit to too much more than that. So yeah. Sankey will get like a, t like a 10 minute -ish, ish blink dagger. And... Yeah. Chen's like, wants to persuade a creep. He's not even getting a creep. Jesus, the priority in the HGT camp is giving Sanking his blink over Chen even getting a creep to convert. Yeah, it's kind of, he's still level 4, I mean, they're not gonna have hand on guard for the like, next 3 minutes, I think. Yeah. You just hit level 4, so, and since Sanking's taking most of the XP in the jungle, and <laughs> it's just a really, it just kind of, kind of reminds you of a pub game, you know, where you play Chen and there's just this one Sanking who says, not my jungle. It's well, if you're, if you're the Chen in that game, you actually just say, screw you, I'm taking this creep, I don't care if you want to farm it, but... <laughs> S is like, okay, you can have it, I'll wander yeah, on. S is, S is just being a nice guy, so, yeah. yeah. Yep. This golem is still in the camp. <laughs> oh, that's... He still hasn't killed it. It's, yeah. it's just a terrible game for him, I think. He'll take that 60 golden XP. He gets the smoke, but, like, just the one creep, this is not going to be the scariest smoke gang. Maybe with the Sanking Blink Dagger it can be. It's a Sanking yeah, Solo it's... Smoke. Man, Sanking's... Yeah, it's a blink, I suppose. He still has a level 2 Boros Strike, which is not too... I don't know. The Chen even impressive. bought the smoke for him, I think. Do you think they can kill the Ember Spirit mid? He's kind of low at the moment. Mm, Max Flame Guard's there. Sunstrike uh, is not gonna sun... hit. What? 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 They did what zero that? damage to him. <laughs> yeah. He was at 350 HP at the start of the game. At the end of the game, he was still on 350. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what that Sunstrike was about, really, because... I mean, it was a stun target. Come on, CTY. Yeah. I mean, stop He's trying to predict the fans. predict movement of a stunned hero. Spoiler alert: they don't move. They're stunned. Come on, man. Oh boy. Well, CTY's just, got his oh minus, my... but this is like he needs to be getting kills as well. <laughs> on top of this. XCT is going. I mean, I suppose he's having a decent game. At least he's oh, got Ravage right. up. But they see the chant. No, yeah. they don't go for the chant. They're going for go the, mid. yeah. I, I think they're gonna try for the go for the yep. Volker. He just picked up his Midas, so uh, I don't think they saw the Midas. Otherwise, they'd know where to find him. And there we go. They find him. They get the Ice Vortex off, but he's too far away. So it's daytime. Build smoke gank so. and no. not the best result for Orange, but not particularly no. But they can still turn into Radiant's push. Yeah. They got five mid, so it is probably gonna be a tier one tower. Orange are really scary at this stage, even with it being daytime. Like you got a level eight Ember Spirit. You've got Marana who's level 8, Elder Titan's level 6, so we're getting close to that max uh, natural order. And Ember, Ember Spirit plus Elder Titan is one of those really disgusting combos when you see it in action as well. The yeah, they need some... Fantastic. Dyer's bottom they need some damage on the Ember Spirit before it really becomes, um, you know, viable, where you, where you see him really doing the work with the Spirit. And yeah. uh, what level is the Spirit at the moment? It's level 3, it's, so one more level and it's going to be max level Spirit. Orange are just looking in a very comfortable Dyer's position. They don't need to force anything attack. at the moment. They they can just sit back and relax. And maybe during the next night time they can they can continue doing stuff, which should hit in ten seconds. So yeah, they've still got like a good like four or five minutes before ZSMJ gets a Lincoln Sphere. Like they there's no way you're farming a Lincoln's faster than like fifteen minutes on a Weaver, and even that you're not going to be getting. Uh, well, Ice Blast did hit mid lane, but still, once again, the yeah. Night Soccer doesn't have a point in silence, so he can't really go for it. <laughs> He gets level 6, but that's just going to be his first point in the ultimate, so... No silence. I, Deal. I just really dislike level 1 ultimate yeah. on Night Stalker. I All think right. it's so crappy. I'm sure Cinderin somewhere is uh, crawling over right now, looking at this Night Stalker build. He won't be pleased. He's a big fan <laughs> of the early silence. Radiance middle yeah. tower is under As attack. As am I, and I really just like early darkness. Are fortified. I think it's just level 1 darkness is so underwhelming. It doesn't really yeah. extend nighttime for long. And... Yeah. 
It's nice to have when it begins daytime again, maybe, but like to extend nighttime, it's like an extra 25 seconds. It's hardly worth getting the point. Instead, you get a silence. Like, you can kill ZSMJ if you had silence. Like, he's trying to walk up to the high ground. Oh, nice gank in the mid lane. They get the arrow combined with a fire remnant. Sanking. Oh, he's gonna live. Okay. He's gonna be okay. Yeah. Still, it's down. just. The searing. I mean, fly off into searing chains plus arrow, and that's caught instantly. They just have so high mobility as well with the nearly max movement speed Nightstalker this early and he just needs to get treads and he's going to be even faster so they can't really go for the tight ravage it's they're just not grouping up Elo Titan is just spamming his spirit from afar Mirana is shooting arrows and Ancient Apparition Ultimate they just have a, such a long initiation range that they don't really the Tide Hunter re can't really go for a proper ravage Anyways, he needs a blink dagger if he wants yeah. to try to do something. He does seem to be just going for a straight blink dagger rush, which I think is probably a good idea here. He can go back for the the mech if needed later. Although Chen's actually building the mech, so Ty doesn't need anything along those lines. So straight blink will help out his team actually get initiation, which they're lacking. I guess sanking blink is there, but you just need more follow up, more damage, and CTY mid. Trouble here, the ice blast's going to go, but no follow up coming from uh, Mirana or from the Elder Titan. He's got four points in the quads, which really makes him kind of tanky at the moment. Ability. It's not that easy to kill, and he's got face boots, so... Yeah. He's, he, he's okay. It, I think it's just overall a bit the fear factor, so he can't free farm properly. Still, he has second highest CS once again. This, his mechanical skill, it, nobody can doubt that. He's just really, really good, but... We'll see what he does with this farm. Maybe he makes better decisions this time and goes for better items as well. We'll see. I hope he doesn't go for this. I hope that's not a Yule Scepter. <laughs> because the Yule Scepter is such a pub build, you know, you just go for the solo killing potential, yeah. but I don't think it's gonna work against Orange's lineup. Oh, they find the Chen here with an Ice Blast. Not gonna be enough damage, or is it? It's gonna be close. One right click. Oh, the pause! Oh, what a pause! He needs the right. He'll get the right click here. He'll be. It's a kill, but the timing of this one. <laughs> Chen well, probably thinks he's gonna live. He doesn't realize there's a Night Stalker on him. Yeah, this is just, I don't know, unpause and suddenly kill. Kinda, yeah. kinda screwed. Because the Ice Blast, this last tick isn't gonna kill him. He'll live just above the threshold. Yeah. The yeah. right click will, will do him in. Or we'll possibly mm. even avoid in one second if he wants to use the void. I don't think it's necessary, really. Yeah. <laughs> he deals 84 damage at the moment it's, and, and there's one more ice blast tick coming i think yeah if he gets the right click off before the uh, the ice blast tick but uh, and uh, use the oh, okay. <laughs> i think the, the pause kind of cancelled his attack animation maybe, for so you just yeah. Sort of, yeah play it i mean may as well play it safe get the kill secure it and back off he's got the clarity he's got plenty of mana and uh it's still gonna be nighttime but sometimes so zsmj's picked up his ulti orb still He's still a minute, or maybe even two minutes away from that Lincoln Sphere, so if Orange want to keep being aggressive during this night time now, they can do so. Yeah, they're popping the night in darkness once again, and now he actually has a point in silence after that kill, so... Yeah. Weaver is Radiant's definitely a target that they can kill. Attack. He's got 900 HP, even with the ultimate orb, so... He's kind of squishy, really. I don't know if HTT, maybe they want to... Tide has blinked there, but he doesn't have the mana to attack. Use yep. it, so he needs to pop a clarity and yeah. He currently only has blink ravage though. That's that's basically it, and doesn't have any other spells. No one's got arcane boots for him. Like sanking just the naked blink dagger, so probably gets the arcane boots a bit later Dyer's on, but doesn't have it just yet. I think there's a tower trade going down though. Ice blast mid lane will cause some problems attack. for uh, ATT. Or oh, even an okay. earth being used. Ooh. That earth splitter was kind of weird, but still. Dyer's I think maybe hoping to catch up DSMJ with it, but no. They'll get the tier 1 tower mid, but Dyer's it's in exchange for the bottom tier 1 tower, so... Yeah, and Ysara got the last hit as well, so it's completely even trade, and HT had to commit four heroes, well, actually the entire team, to, to, to try to take it down, while yeah. top lane Sox was still farming. So he's also going for Midas into Lincoln, so yeah, he's gonna be okay. Yeah, HGT had like all five heroes mid. That was a full commitment from, from their point of view, so. Yeah. I mean, the Lincoln Sphere of all Mirana this game is actually is kind of attack. really, really good because the only way that they're really killing him is through the Sankin Burrow Strike, which is essentially the only targeted thing that can hit him from long range. Yeah. So, it's a, it's a good pickup. And overall, just Lincoln Sphere, often we see it on carries because it's just so good for the sustain. 
No, I like it here. You can go back to that, like, Mjolnir after the Lincolns, or Desolate, or whatever it may be, as far as damage output goes. Yeah. He's not gonna have any problems farming this game. That's where the Midas also helps you out a lot. It's just overall a bit of a quiet game, and Orange are just picking up kills here and there, and it's fine. They're gonna be happy. It's daytime once again, so they don't need to force anything. Just wait for the next nighttime. And, yeah. Support Night Slug at the moment is kind of working out. Yeah, he's getting farm. He's going to be fairly tanky. has treads, has his urn. can start building towards a BKB maybe with an, enough money for an Ogre Club. So, I think we'll probably see BKB first from him. In, in a game against Tide, Sanking, Invoker. I think you do on that BKB. Yeah. Well, mid lane we saw Blink into Boros Strike on the Mirana, but there was no way like, they could kill him. And there was absolutely zero follow-up because essentially the rest of the players are just going, what are you doing? And then we can't kill it anyway. This, this Chen though, I said he's not going to hit level 6 in the next 3 minutes, I think. Well, he's still not level 6 yet, and it's just been 8 minutes since. So, they're going for the big smoke gang on top lane, but, well, they're going to hold it. He gets out of there in time. You serious? It's, it's, Some good map pointers yeah. from the, the young young kid here. I bet if it's CTY on the Ember Spirit, he doesn't have a remnant back. Back at the tower. Radiant he just yeah. just tower kills Pulsi. He just doesn't. Well, well, I don't That's need a remnant. I can see remnant out of it and really go up. A, a probably pretty accurate statement to make. Yeah. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. You see, not one uh, to get greedy. And you see, he's only 17 years old. That's the impressive thing about this guy. He's a really young player in the Southeast Asian team. Radiant's middle tower. Oh, they they do attack. have Winter to watch Dyer's over him, I guess. Yeah. Winter's is probably attack. really. I mean, it's a, he's a wily veteran, so he knows exactly how. how the game should be played. While at the same time, CTY, Dyer's I think he has a has problem fallen. with authority. There's a certain reason why it didn't work out in the old Vichy gaming lineup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you look where FY and Tenmu are now, off to a uh, much bigger and better thing uh, compared to the yeah. old Vichy gaming roster. Yeah, exactly. Actually, the three in the team of HTT were a former Vichy gaming. They all played along, alongside each other. There's MJ, CTY, and XTT. Yeah, that's right. They were actually, actually yeah. yeah, they were actually three teammates in the Vichy gaming. Um, yep. And back then with FY and Fenrir, but now the former DK players of Super and RTK also joined Vichy Gaming and and Sila, of course, also another world class carry. So Vichy Gaming overall, I think after the TI uh, TI two reshuffle, like both Vichy Gaming and DK kind of profited from it. So it's pretty interesting, like because you look at DK, like they lost, like it was ROTK who like left the team, but like ROTK found himself like a new home where I th like ROTK has done almost better at Beachy Gaming than he did DK. It feels like so. For ROTK, so, he's not gonna yeah. be too upset about how things went down. Yeah. Apparently, he also once again became friends with Burning at some point. There was a lot of you know grudge after, yeah, initially after the reshuffle, but initially, but apparently now they, they figured it out, they had to talk, and everything is fine now. Okay. So, yeah, I think they're both happy. Burning's pretty happy with his team, I would, I would, I mean, I would they, assume. They should be pretty happy right now. They're <laughs> winning Star Ladder, winning tournaments left, right, and center, winning WPC, so... Yeah, well, this this uh, this season they're not doing particularly well in WPC, though. <laughs> I mean, they're just... I don't know if it's just them just trying, experimenting every time, but... It, it they did draft quite a few funky things like Mushi or Sniper and yeah, stuff like that. They do seem to so, experiment a lot in these games. Which is I, this is which is totally fine. I mean they did it before Starlighter as well. They yeah. dropped games to SkyS and then in, in Starlighter they just on LAN they bring their A game. It's, yep. Yeah. Well they bring their A game and they use some of the things they experimented with. Like they brought the support Meepo. Like they they bring the things that they test out and try out. It's not like yeah, a. It, they lost with the support meep against LGD, but they yep. they won with the support meep. And I forgot against who it was, but they used it to great effect during Star Ladder. So, props to them. I think this DK is such a versatile team. They can afford to just you know lose some games here and there. I mean, I'm not. I, they are still the favorites going into TI4. Nobody's going to take them lightly just because they lost a series to DT Club or yeah. to to CIS. So losing games in think, some sense is definitely healthy. Like it helps you like look at your team, what you can improve on, rather than if you just win against all these teams all the time. It's like, well, you're not you're not seeing where you can improve as much. Exactly, and I think DK just overall they they, they like, looking at the last games they always tend to go for really really greedy picks. I mean, Lam is most of the time playing a really attack. greedy support hero, so it's no surprise. Yeah. Well, HGT with the Necrobook three picked up on CTY. They do not go for a push. A bad leap coming out from Shox. He leaps forward, forced the ball. They just 
Yeah, Nick with me gives them vision though. They okay. just they used so many spells on Mirana and didn't even come close to killing them. Yeah. They just have no good lockdown unless they use a rabbit there. There's your rabbit. Blink rabbit catches out three. Mirana's still in some trouble. Gets a leap out though. Pretty whore. Does nothing. He blinks in. Doesn't fire strike. Doesn't epicenter. Just doesn't feel comfortable that he's got a good line there for hitting anyone in the bar strike. So backs off and with the slider fist spam, this tower is going to be kept alive. Like pushing into slider fist is just a, a no go. It feels like. Yeah, and they they even expended the ravage, got nothing out of it, and just Ember Spirit had a DD room, so I think that made things a lot yeah. easier. Yeah, he's still got it for one more slider fist, maybe here in the mid lane. But. One Forge Spirit down, and I think this, this push is over, they can't force it. If they continue forcing it, I think... Uh, oops, that was not looking good, but... I don't think they can really get the tower. No. It's so difficult. They don't yeah. have to sustain, I think. Yep, arrow gonna go flying out. Not gonna hit again, but they'll just keep throwing these arrows, keep throwing these storms, keep throwing whatever it may be. Meanwhile... Oh, Insidious? Ooh, Insidious, yeah, he's caught in no man's land. He's being chased down by this Weaver, and there's gonna be a Blink Anchor Smash, and it looks like he will go down in the end. No exchange in sight from Orange, but... They're still holding this push, it's not ideal for them, but not the, uh, not the biggest skill for AGT at the same time. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's those skills where you think it's it's nice, of course, to get the golden XP, but in the end it doesn't give you any strategic advantage. I mean, they have to TP back now because bot lane's pushing in. So, the, this push is over and Orange didn't, I mean, they, they traded the Night Stalker for it, but still, it's, um, it's okay in their book. They don't need to force anything once again. The Ember Spirit, he has his Battle Fury up, so he's going for the Ancient Stack at the moment. As they, they just need one more damage, like some damage item on the Ember Spirit, and then they can really go. Yeah. And Mirana, completed Lincolns, also needs one, one more damage item. Like, when when Ysira yeah. gets probably what I imagine is going to be his crit, and like Mirana gets, starts putting like Mjolnir or Desolator, like it's just going to be so painful. HGT have no way to push, they don't really have... Their team fight's still good with the Sand King and the Tidehunter, but just no longer gonna win them win them fights against the really overfarmed RNG Sports hero. I think it's very difficult at the moment for HGT to do. Once again, they're grouping up mid. They really want this tier two tower. Yeah, I. Don't I, know if that's a, I don't. I mean, even if they get it, you know, it's it's okay, fine. We give the tier two. It doesn't really give. AGT is such a huge strategic advantage. It's a bit of gold, like, meanwhile, Mirana's farming top lane, Dyer's you've got... I mean, Ember Spirit's staying attack. mid lane to farm and defend, Dyer's but... This is just a tier 2 mid tower, it's not... It's not Raxus, it's nothing that's gonna win you the game. Yeah. They finally get it with the next one, but, uh, has fallen. still, this... I'm gonna have a look at the gold graph, actually. Think... The XP difference is in favor of orange which doesn't is yeah. no surprise since HT just been grouping up so much so it's still a very no... small it's only 1k though like yeah. it's, it's like all the golden xp is pretty much i would say for 25 minutes in more or less even yeah i mean both teams just look to be content to farm maybe just HT have faith in the zed and weaver and just think well we are still gonna out carry you with our better carry <laughs> yeah not quite sure if he's gonna do it but still i mean orange apparently just thinking the same thing we we, we just wait for Agnum Scepter, Night Stalker, so he, we have complete map control and um, Spirit plus Ember Spirit spam. Yeah. It's, He's going uh, for his second Battle Fury as well, Ysira, so. I'm not a big fan of it, but I mean, it's effective in a way. Yeah, it's. I'm not a big fan either, but it's like, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna do him any harm, really. Either way, yeah. it's damage, it's more cleave. And against all the summons, it's actually not bad. Like, Chen Creep, Forge Spirits, and Necrobooks, more cleave is actually pretty good in that scenario. It's against, like, single targets where the cleave is somewhat unreliable. Yeah, I mean, it could also be a Lincoln Sphere, I suppose, and the Boros Strike from Sand King and yeah. possible Hex later on. But... No, he's, he's got the Claymore now. Yeah, okay, well, it's a second battle for him. As you said, against the, against the pushing power of HET, maybe it's not, not a bad thing to, to, to go for it. Oh, CTY is gonna, he's gonna go for a, another kind of, I don't know, quote-unquote pub build. It's still somewhat competitively viable. It has the Yule Scepter, which is great for your, like, solo killing Sunstrike. Media Deafening Blast combo. But they have been grouping up so much that, yeah. I don't know. It's, and they, he can't really go for the Mirana because she has a Lincoln Sphere, so... I'm not quite sure if this Yule Scepter is gonna, gonna pay off, really. Maybe it's almost like to break the Lincoln so that you can virus break the Mirana? Yeah, but why would you go for Dyer's bottom tower yeah. is under attack. 
Yule's just overall, I don't know, it's it's a good snowballing item if you can get it really early and get first solo kills, but still. The HET, what they're doing is going for tier 2s with Necrobots apparently and Chen the army. And Orange, it's a nice stomp coming out there from Winter, but the tower's still gonna go down to the white pixel last tower has Oranges don't seem confident to defend, like, they're like, well, we're an item short on our Ember Spirit, we're maybe even an item short on Mirana, let's just give up towers. Possibly even give up Roshan here, HET. You want to go into the Roshan pit? They can. It's maybe a bit of a risk here against... I mean, against the Orange Esports lineup, this is really risky to do. Orange have great Roshan fighting capabilities with Ember Spirit, Elder Titan. If it's nighttime especially, but right now it is still daytime for a little bit longer. Well, yeah, it's overall I think Orange are not defending the towers because their two supports are just not particularly good at doing it. I mean, they have Morana and Nightstalker. Just, <laughs> they don't really have any AoE to clear out creeps, so... Uh, of not support, sorry, I just said support Morana, that wasn't too wrong. I just still, they're under the impression that we have a support Morana, but, um, just overall they are, apart from, like, AA, spamming Ice Blast is not really an option before, because otherwise HD can initiate a fight, so, um, yeah, it's overall orange. I think even just letting the towers go against uh, the five man of HET is not much of a much of an yep. issue really. They they can still just wait for. Uh, and I think they just look at this like HET are five manning so much that they're not farming that well. Like only Weaver's getting farm. Invoker's got a Yule Scepter. Maybe gets a hex of it later on. But like I think they just they favor their late game. I think they feel that if this game goes another 10, 20 minutes, we have the better late game. We've got two to three core heroes. We've got a. A pretty Night Stalker with an Ag Scepter is going to be pretty damn useful just for the kind of legit map hack. And well, maybe now they're even going to have an agent on top of that. Sounds like it's going to scout them, but AGT is grouping up for the push on tier 2, so it might be actually late to hit the party. They have a Desolator up, so. I think Orange are going to get it before they get here. Oh, maybe not. The Grand Blink. Oh, Zed is MJ, Just look at the damage. Oh, Yasira gets blown up. The A just gets taken by the Tidehunter. This is not good for Orange. They do lose the Weaver. As you mentioned. Meanwhile, oh. Night Stalker getting caught up by an Instator. He gets thrown up in the air by TTY, but he's actually silenced. He's got no spells to pull this one up. Night Stalker goes Invis, but there's detection for it in the form of the Necro 3, so it's a 2 for 1 trade. That was scarcely worth my notice. Good fight for HGT. They get there just in time to take the Aegis and get the Blink Ravage off. That was like. ZSMJ got completely bursted down from full HP. Like AA Ice, Bla AA Ice Blast and With Ember Spirit, Slide of Fist. Okay. I didn't actually Brana even see Arrow, him die, Spirit. he just disappeared. Yeah. He just disappeared. He just got blown up instantly. Which is middle a bit of, bit of an issue, but still a really nice play there from XCT, just going for the Blink Ravage, steaming the Aegis, and denying Orange of it. That's uh, some really, really good play. And actually, they got the last hit on Roshan as well, so some nice heads up play there by, by XCT. Dyer's top Tide seems to be going for a straight attack. refresher all. He doesn't have the mana for a refresher Tide. You know, he needs Arcane Dyer's Boots if he wants to go for a refresher, I think. He really yeah. doesn't Dyer's have mana. Yeah, I've never seen Tide attack. go refresher without Arcane Boots. This is a first for me. But... Well, I don't uh, know. Just doing the math, I mean, refresher costs how much mana? 375 or something? Yeah, 375 sounds right. Yeah. So, I don't know, it doesn't even remotely have the mana pool to pull And the thing off. is, the only reason you can do it with Arcane Boots is because you use your Arcane Boots twice. Like, you ulti, you Arcanes, then you refresh, and you can Arcanes again before your next ulti. Like, yeah. you, like one Arcane Boots is enough. You have to have the double Arcanes from the refresher. Yeah, that's true. And I guess, uh, like, what, Sanking has Arcanes? There's no Chen Arcane Boots, so... I, I don't know. Not sure how he has the mana to support this. The Chen essentially is just his creeps are tanking the tower and he's a walking hand of hand of god basically. That's yeah. what all he's good for at this stage of the game, which is I don't know, I mean he didn't get too much accomplished in the early game, but then again it was uh, a Invisibility. bit of it was just tanking, stifling his own teammates progress, so I can't can't really blame him, I guess. But yeah. I mean both teams once again, it's the H T have took taken the last outer tier two, so there's nothing nothing left to do there. They can't really put, push high ground at this stage of the game. I don't think they can. Yeah. So. Well, there's your Tide Refresher. 30 minute Refresher. This sounds great on paper, but... He he cast Ravage. He won't even have mana to use Refresher. Yeah. That <laughs> You need 600 mana. Maybe with some magic one charges will be fine, but... I guess, and just have... What? 
have Sandkin park next to him and just say, look, I just blinked in and ravaged and refresh it. Can you arcane boots me now? Like in the middle of a fight. I don't yeah. think that's going to work, but still. And even with the arcane boots, he still wouldn't have enough mana for the combo. No, no he just still doesn't have enough mana. That's yeah. true, actually. And if he hits level 16, it's, even, it's not going to work out. Yeah, then it goes up to 325. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he's planning on trying to. to I don't know. Maybe I imagine just, he gets arcane boots now, but like I, I you should just so. get your arcane sure. before the refresher. Like, yeah, there's there's not much point in going refresher right now. I mean, yeah. you're showing the opponent that you're you're having a refresher, I guess. <laughs> I think Orange will look at this and just kind of laugh. Like, how's he gonna use this? Forest, like they break the Lincoln. Sock's actually in some trouble. There's your Ravagen. They wow. get a kill. They do Child. expend two I ultimates agree. to kill him, but uh, that was actually a really nice setup there. Just. I think there was really good decision making from them to to try to go. He for refreshed. The... <laughs> Did he? <now? laughs> he wants well, another. He wants another ravage. He needs some mana. Like a couple one charges and arcane nice. boots. Radiant's top tower is, Sankin? is under Sankin? attack. Sankin body, give him arcane boots, man. Thirty gold shot. He Radiant sells his cloak, big, picks up some arcane boots. There I know he's blink ravage again. That's <laughs> actually really nice. Yeah. <laughs> that possibly. worked out better than I expected. <laughs> They may get Raxus off of this. Morana's dead, does a buyback, but we'll see what Morana can do to defend this one. Okay, it's, it's not Raxus when you're against Ember Spirit with double battle spirit. Oh, it's, it's nice tier 3 push. They're gonna get a tier 3 for sure. Yep. Tier 3 goes down. They're gonna back off before they go for the Raxus, it looks like. I know this. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Citizen Blade is taking a lot of damage. Tower uh, is under attack. And he's back. gonna get sent back to base, yeah. That's the end of the push. And, uh. Yeah. It only gets trickier when Ysira gets his his Daedalus next. It's going to be even harder to push into this. Yeah. BKB not going to help you there, ZSMJ. Are they going to try to go for them? They, they pop the Moonlight Shadow, but still, it's only Insidious C is in, standing in the front lines. And AGT is once again grouped up, and they have Blink Ravage. Oh, he gets stunned. He was trying to deward. Insidious is going to get punished for this one. That was just so cocky from him. Poor decision there. Meme on the mid lane. There's your Ravage from XTT. Only has the one Ravage this fight. XTT being trying to get right click down by Sox. The chase is on from ZSMJ. Doesn't look like he'll catch up to this Mirana. Already well out of the way there. ZSMJ using his BKB and everything. So Yeah, they blew up CTY with the Ember Spirit. Mm -hmm. So. They're up from that. Yeah, so CTY goes down, but it's a. Yeah, trade for the Night Stalker. So good trade for RNG Sports. Overall, though, we, we do see the weakness of the Night Stalker pick because he just can't defend pushes. He's not particularly good in team fights if just HT 5 man. He's only good as Radiant's for the vision of the Aghanim stepped in. So he got caught out. I think it's very, very, uh, it was very kind of ambitious to go for the D ward knowing that they have full vision of him. I mean, when you're going for a D ward, that basically yeah. means the opposition team knows where you are. So that was uh, another particularly good play from him but luckily orange still got the got the trade by killing the cty so i think this game is gonna go quite late it's it, it unless... feels that way like we're looking yeah. at 50 plus minutes like same as game one <laughs> we're in we're in a similar <laughs> boat yeah i guess the haters of chinese dota are just gonna say you know it's chinese dota <laughs> this farming farming game but it, and it's just the both teams think they have the better late game so they don't force anything and I think this is almost like RNG Sports. They they're not like a they're they have good laning and good early game every now and then, but they don't have like the experience or just the ability to like end games as fast as they theoretically could. And I think we're going to be seeing like when RNG Sports win games, I think they're going to be a lot of long games. Um, any games that go fast, I think it's going to be RNG Sports just losing. I don't I don't see RNG Sports being a team who can just win games in 15, 25 minutes. Radiance but with the current level of play, though, I mean, they're going for the two, for the racks, and I think this range back is definitely going to fall. They can't do yep. anything. That is going to do far too much damage. Has fallen. My shadow was used, but Radiance bottom tower no follow up uh, as far as engaging goes in this melee rack, taking a bit of damage as well. Gets down to uh, close to half HP, but. Yeah, they it's, could just it's, go high ground with the BKBs almost. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. There's Glyph. They did go for a split push with Morana, who tipped it back to, to, to the lane at the last second, basically. Yeah. But Orange, if they want to beat IG next, they need really need to step up the game. This is not going to work against IG. I mean, they are they are struggling heavily with uh, against HTT and yeah. It's not looking too well at the moment. I mean, they lost the range tracks, which I suppose is fine with a double battle fury Ember Spirit. Um, I don't know if that's Mithra Hammer's gonna go Desolator or BKB. I think it's gonna be BKB against Sight Hunter, Ravage, and yeah. Sand King. So. I agree. 
But his his damage up with like double barrier fury is nice and all, but you kind of I feel like until you get the crit, it's just side of fist isn't gonna be getting you kills. Yeah. Radiance bottom ATP tower. back off for now. Attack. Even with the double ravage up, they decide they don't want to force the issue too much. They back off. Uh, Roshan is respawning in the next couple of minutes, so see. Just the thing is. I really think HET's lineup is currently at their strongest point. I mean, Chen just becomes a non-factor anyway. Yeah. And double Ravage, once Orange get like BKBs on Morana, Nightstalker, Ember Spirit. So, I mean, Morana already has BKB. And Nightstalker, I think his next item might be a BKB. And looks like Ember Spirit, yeah, with Mithraimer should be a BKB. So then double Ravage and tanking ultimate just doesn't become scary again. And the Meteor Deathling Blast combo by CT Boy. It's just not going to work out in a, in a team fight either. So they don't have any physical DPS apart from the Weaver. And I don't think ZZMB can solo carry this. So I still think Orange going late into the, the later stages of the game uh, are going to look just fine. Radiance top yeah. tower and the Emisphere BKB, BKB is now there. So you're serious. Oh, just 20 gold away from it and he'll be good to go. So uh, the BKBs you talked about. The Night Stalkers one's probably the only one, the furthest away. Yeah, yeah, he's still got a long way to go. Radiance top tower Get some tower gold, that'll help them out. I think the big timing from ATT is going to come possibly with this next Roshan. If they get Aegis for themselves, they'll look to at least get this melee rack mid and possibly start pushing another lane. Yeah. CDY is scouting with the Sunstrike, but uh, Roshan's not back up again, and yeah. ATT are grouping up once again. They want those melee racks. Yeah, um, I think they can... They should. They should force it right now, but I'm not quite sure. With double BKB and up... Does he? No, Ember Spirit still hasn't bought it yet. He probably should right now. Yeah, there we Get go. On the courier. Yeah, there we go. So they have double BKB and maybe they can win the fight now, but we'll see. I mean, Melee Barracks are already taking a heavy beating, so... Earthspear going down the middle does actually miss the Sankey in the air there, and they, they force out the Glyph, so... That's well, round one. They Angel killed... Apparition just died. Wow. <laughs> Sunstrike and some Ford Sunstrike. Spirits, yeah, I guess. Sunstrike. Yeah. That was kind of bad, though. They really need the A ultimate to take the fight. Oh, Miranda are they going to go for the, the... Well, do they have a gem on HET? They should. Yeah, Tide has a gem. He's ready, good to go. BKB from the Weaver. He's going to focus oh, on the Rax time lapse up as well. This Rax being very low. Can't even use in the Hand of God here. And one more Shikuchi up from the Weaver. That'll finish off the melee Rax. So well executed from HET to push down the mid Raxes. Yeah. It's orange once again. They just can't really defend pushes that well. And especially not with yeah. once Necro, Necro Book is up. So. They haven't got any good initiation, it just feels like. like Elder Titan's not doing... Like, the Stomps aren't that reliable. The Searing, Side of Fist Searing Chains isn't really there. Like, they've got no initiation like HTT yeah. do with the Sand King Tidehunter. Yeah. I'm going to scout for the Rogue. Rogue Hunters are back up again, but HTT are not going to go for this, I don't think. Are they? Okay. Oh, what do they think? Hey, I saw some cooldown. Let's go. Yeah. This MJ with a lacquer, you can kill this pretty damn fast. He's got a Crystallis now as well, so he has the uh, the crits come into play. Orange want to contest Arrow. Going to hit Roche. Misses the SMJ. That would have been the ideal target. Double Ravage online for XTT. He needs to make sure he doesn't get caught out here. Miranda going to come through. Fire Strike will break the Lincoln, so immediate force up out. There's your agent picked up by the Weaver, and this is a fight I don't think Orange want to take. It is now night from XT. Silence up gets hit by an arrow. He's actually really low. See one Ravage go up, there's a second Ravage as well, they didn't get the BKB look, but they do kill the Tidehunter in the end. Nice start to the fight, they've lost the Night Stalker on the side though, now the side of Fist going through and Ember Spirit says, get me out of here. Doesn't want anything to do with this, Shox is trying to chase down the Invoker here, will leap after him, but there's a Ghost Walker, no detection. They lost the Chen elsewhere and Tishy Y, one Shox here, the gem's being dropped on the ground, they haven't actually got the gem anymore. Searing Chain's gonna lock down Pretty Whore and Ysira still fighting, still chasing, wants Pretty Whore. One more side of fist could do seal the deal here. Pretty Hall gets caught up, seen by the fire remnant. Will go down in the end. Leap out from the Rana. The chase is still on. The Necrobox is providing vision. And there we go. Gem back in ZSMJ's hands. A, a weird fight there. It lasted a long, long time and goes yeah, pretty was, well um, for Orange. Yeah, it, it is actually because they popped the Aegis on the Weaver as well. So that's actually pretty good. In the end, they won the fight despite double Ravage. Well, he didn't get the second Ravage off, so he yeah. died. Once he, and even the first Ravage refreshing. didn't really do too much. Like, it, it did stun two core heroes, but there was no follow-up damage. There was no real... I mean, there was nothing uh, combined with it the Ravage. It only stunned the Mirana, and the Ember Spirit was still in BKB form at that time. So yeah. it didn't hit the Ember. It's, uh, overall, I think Orange took the best fight possible, considering the situation that HT already took Roshan. So, 
Still, with Midrax going down, it's kind of annoying for them, though. They really need Mirana to deal more damage. They need Ember Spirit to get more DPS. He's got a Crystalis, so he should be very close to Daedalus now. So, I actually think this is a Rapier game for Ember Spirit. Yeah, I think after the after the Daedalus, I think you pick up that Rapier. I agree. Yeah. He's... It's um, it's just the best damage output possible. They need more damage on the Ember. I guess the other option is you go, like, two Daedalus. Is, like, get the double Daedalus so you can just have the higher crit chance, but... I'm not, not not a big fan of that, but okay. I really think uh, because I don't think they have the damage at the moment to to kill the kill the heroes. I mean, what HD is doing, they just death ball with Chen summons and um, Necrobox, Fort Spirits, and Orange can't go in. They don't don't have anybody to stand in the front lines and try to take out the creeps. So because Ember Spirit is staying far back, Morana is staying far back, and everybody basically is. So. How many Divine Rapiers do we see this game? Like, between Weaver, Ember Spirit, how many do you think we're gonna get? Uh, at the moment, I don't know. If HET win this next fight, it's game over. Yeah, <laughs> so. that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I'd probably say we'll see one Divine Rapier. I Radiance think. Top tower is under On the Ember Spirit, at least. Or Sunstrike? Oh, this is actually a lot of damage. Very there. I think close. if ZSMJ gets, gets another crit, He's dead. Radiance yeah. Middle Tower. Uh, is if he had a Daedalus Air, it's a kill. Uh, or an MKB to just cancel the TP, but. Yeah. Daedalus uh, will be up uh, pretty much now. ZSMJ can buy Daedalus, but we're going to buy back if he does do so, so that's probably a bit of a concern for him. Oh, screw it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Screw it. Let's, let's see it. Screw it. Just don't. I mean, I hate those games where people save for buyback. And then fight once, buy back into the game, fight again, and they all they all die. Yeah. And then they just farm for another 12 minutes until they have buyback again. It's, those are the most boring games. But it's it's a safe way of playing Dota, but it's not particularly exciting for the viewers or for the commentators yeah. for that matter. Well, Jackie gonna get a, a value D ward here. Sees two observer wards with one sentry. Oh no, he doesn't see it. He's been fogged. Ah, right, there we go. That was That's like a nice arrow on CTY oh, wow. actually. CTY, oh, please. God. Ice blast. No. Ooh, this may be close to a kill. CTY's gonna walk into it. Oh, Ooh. he didn't. He just he barely he stayed very, outside. Very, very cool. I think if AI ice blast hits, that might have. No, yeah. he doesn't have reveal, so. CTY, I don't. He sunstruck the Ember Spirit who was killing Ancients and revealed the fact they had an Observer over there. Like that was just really dumb play from CTY. Well, DD rune on ZSMJ and let's go for the push, boys. Yeah, this is maybe what they've been waiting for. Let's just wait for DD Rune go yeah. high ground. That's the, <laughs> that's the strat. We'll see if oh. uh, they do commit to this high ground here. They have got the uh, double Ravage ready to go. I mean, only ulti they're missing is that Chen Hand of God, which is not the end of the world. It's just a, essentially a mech that you're missing. 300 AoE heal. Doesn't really matter. I think they can. If Chen wouldn't be in this game, I still think it would be the same situation, really. Doesn't yeah. Doesn't really make much of a difference. Full stuff's so, one of those items which can always save a teammate. Though. Yeah, I, that's true. And yeah. even the Chen backs with the Test of Faith, but yeah, I think. I mean, I think Chen for his actual like Hand of God and his Mech and Vlad's is like, eh, not not too important. Well, we even picks a full heart. Himself, so. Screw screw Daedalus. ZSMJ just wants the heart of Tarask, so he's what gonna be. What a freaking pussy. <laughs> uh, Sorry, but no, I really no, like this guy. But still, it's wait, it's, wait. it's it's still it's a safe choice. It's good for sieging, I guess. I mean, you can just go high ground, chip yeah. away, and then regen back up to full HP. It's CSMJ, <laughs> man. What did you expect? I mean, he's just so safe. This guy, yeah. is safe as carried, but he's safer than burning, which kind of says something. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, the, the Ember Spirit's just going to keep on holding the high ground. He's got his Daedalus now. And he's playing safe. Not only has Daedalus, he's make sure he has buyback, so. Yeah. Oh. Does he have buyback? I think if he dies, he doesn't have buyback. No, he's, he's got the reliable gold. Oh, okay. Fine. That's yeah. good, then. Yeah, he's got reliable gold. He's good to go. Well, it's at the moment, it's just HDT trying to pressure both mid and top lane and trying to get to the base, but it's really increasingly difficult with the Ember Spirit. Yeah, Ember Spirit Play just needs one slide of fist, generally speaking, to clear out a creep wave. Yeah. See how he does at this one here, top lane. Well, that could be on the same place, but just, well, creep Radiant's wave was nice, I guess. Doesn't get the full creep wave. ZSMJ getting a couple pot shots off. We'll have the time lapse out. Yeah, there we go. Oh, hit by the stomp. Gets four stuff. That's this? one four stuff. Uh, uh, okay. One two four stuffs and two ultimates being baited out there from orange. Yeah. 
That's a uh, win for HGT. Radiance they get like tower. two, three hundred damage attack. from the T3 tower and bait out the Earth Splitter, bait out the AI Splash. Botlane's pushing though, so they kind of need to go right now. They want to do something. Yeah. Again, DSM on the high ground. Maybe pop his BKB soon. Attack. Now that the glyph's being used, he can just go high ground BKB, get the tower, and then back off maybe. But it's correct though. Like they pop the glyph one once they saw the Radiance Necrobooks coming out. So Necrobooks are on cooldown now. Yeah. It's really difficult at the moment. Like they don't have Necrobooks, so. But HGT are still gonna stick stick around trying to get it. It's the slow and steady siege coming out from HGT. Oh, this is where you do just need to rate a rapier to, to deal with this as best as possible. Tornado media blast combo shock's getting very low as is this here and now HGT know these heroes need to go back to base and heal up almost. So they may this next group wave may be time for them to go high ground. They say screw it, let's go high ground now. Back to protection not there. Tier three tower will go down. Mirana Dyer's still healing at Fountain, they're not really ready to defend this one. A Storm coming out, Yule's actually dodges it from CTY, so... Rain tracks at top, attack. looks like it will be done for. It's going in with the Knight, Stalker leading the way here. Dyer's CT has a Ravage ready, he's saving it for now, doesn't get any off, he gets silenced up actually. There's one cleave coming in through that, gets off the Chen to start things off, XPT. Needs to be careful here. Meanwhile, the Weaver just trying to focus down the Rackers here, now going to switch target, goes on to Winter, Winter could be in some trouble here. DSMJ hits so damn bloody hard. No silence coming out from the Night Stalker. Gets the BKB of Night Stalker. Just gets like two shotted. Oh my gosh. The right click damage coming out there. Gets a dust off. Now the Ravager comes in. The Epicenter is just for an ancient apparition. Oh, the poor, poor AA. You stay frosty, AA. DSMJ now in trouble. Has a time lapse out. The Sun Struggle finish off Yasira. He's got to buy back. Has he got to buy back? Yes, he does. HGT's patience just never ended. Like you say. Yeah, overall, it, I think in the end, it's Dyer's just the lineup though, of Orange that, that... I mean, they have the back on the Ember, but Raxus have already fallen, so... You need the Initiator to go with the Ember Spirit. Like, you need the Sand King mm. on your team, or the Tidehunter, the Earthshaker, whatever it may it's, be. I think, I still think it's just a support Night Stalker figure. Just, yeah. in the end, Night Stalker is a non-factor. He's, he's really... Well, I, I feel like he's a non-factor, but so is the Chet. Like, you, I think both teams have yeah, non-factors, but... Good point. When you're the team defending, you can't have non-factors. You're behind, you're defending your Raptors, you can't have heroes doing nothing. You need everyone pulling their weight. Orange are not totally out of this game, but at the moment it's it's really difficult because HD can just continue the same thing with bot lane. It's and Rapier or time, Bust at this point, but he's got a long yeah. way to go to farm a Rapier. He, he bought back, so he doesn't have a Rapier, and Dead Assembly has a data list now to go with his heart. So. Well, Roshan is up, we'll see if either team tries to make a play on that. Orange leap in. This is game over Just if they lose a Roche fight. Yeah, that's pretty much. I don't even know. HGT didn't scout it yet. So no. they don't know it's going on. They've got no, they have idea. no idea. It's happening. Sunstrike yeah. is up and he's not using it to scout it. So CTY doesn't seem to suspect this at all. Now we will, oh, but okay. it's too late. Too late. Yeah. Just give, give, give it to the Ember. They should pop the BKB. To the to just, secure it. Wow. just to be safe. Like, he doesn't know if a Tide Blink Ravage is coming in or a Sand King Blink Bar Strike. So. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Like, it's sure it's a one second shorter on your BKB now, but just to make sure. At this stage of the game, if you get that Roshan stolen, it's game over. Go sell that Battle Fury and go rape you. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's, he's got no item slot, so. He's got no item slot. He needs the BKB. He really needs the crit. So. He needs face boots, man. He doesn't need boots. <laughs> need fire boots yeah. Good point. Just sell, sell face yeah. boots. Go rape you. He's still, he's still like a good. 4k gold short of the rapier though is the real big problem. Yeah, I think H well, I'm not quite I mean, don't really know why HGT is on top lane at the moment. They can just go bot five man, I think, before he gets his rapier. Yeah. Invoker's down there, but yeah, it seems like it's quasi split push. The SMJ Ooh. Ooh. That was so If that cool. arrow hits, that might have been a really big Maybe. Job. Like with the Astral Spirit and uh, some slider fist damage, it could have been close. Would have needed a crit to, to try yeah. to kill him. Still, it's, I mean, the heart is, makes the Weaver quite tanky. So the Astral Spirit makes they... him a lot squishier, though, like, with the, yeah. with the Elder Titan aura. So. In the end, it's um, the, just that is I'm just showing his experience. The Heart of Taras pickup was correct for the slow siege on top yeah. lane. Yeah, it, it helps with it helps more than the Daedalus does for the siege. Daedalus is more for right clicking heroes because you're not critting buildings. So yeah, that was actually it was it was the right item choice. Mm. As much of a, a of a pussy that as it did make him, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, people were just thinking, you know, come on, this, no. they had an advantage, so 
why still go for a heart? But still, it's, it's a safer choice. They really want to win this game. I mean, they, they lost the first game, which they should have won. So, if they want to have any chances of advancing to the playoffs, they really need to at least draw orange. Orange smoke, but Weaver scouts it out immediately. He's gonna just two well, shot Shark. It was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Arrow onto ZSMJ. It's gonna get them down to half HP. The Earth Spirit also use some more damage. ZSMJ, maybe just, yeah, time ups out. Get his HP back. They can wait 40 seconds for the time lapse to come off cooldown before they try and seek bottom lane, but no, I think that's what they're going to do. Oh, that's like a this game. This it is, is a lot of damage, but still. Not, no rapier, no fun, man. Yeah. He's not getting the kills without the rapier. It, it harasses people, gets him down to like maybe half HP, but you're never securing the kill. Look at the yeah. Hand of God just casually being thrown. Yasira wants to keep on going. He wants to see why. There's a hex oh, though. Yasir is getting hexed. Yeah, and with the Aegis may just be proc here, tries to get out of there. He will fire him out. Meanwhile, ZSMJ onto the high ground. He may just focus buildings here. He's popped the BKB already. They lose the Sankey on the side. XCT hasn't been able to get any Ravage. He's got one Ravage off. He has a second suit. Blink in one. Here we go. Second Ravage coming up soon. There we go. Catches out just two though. The Aegis can proc as well. ZSMJ is going to go down. Savage. Holy shit. Not the best team fight for HGT. They're now on the run. CTY. No detection for him. One sentry was all they've got. They hit him with the Siri chains though. TTY gonna die. He drops a gem. That was just because uh, they were so grouped up. Weaver was standing right next to who was it? I think the Tide. Yeah, he was standing right next to Tide. So yeah. essentially, is there a crit on one of them with a double battle fury and just Weaver explode? Oh man. That tide, like, he was like, oh, I gotta blink. He needed to wait for the Aegis to actually fully respawn. Like, if he waited for the Ember Spirit to respawn, he maybe, he hits three with the Ravage instead of two. He hit two Possibly, and set up the cleave. Still, I think, uh, I still think that Ember Spirit would have gone the Slide of Fist yeah. off his instant, in contrast yes. to Tide's Ravage oh, animation and travel, travel time. Hey, that's your Divine Rapier money. What's he buying Boots to travel for? I don't know. He had 4.5k gold. He practically had it. Yeah, I really don't get it. I have no idea why he didn't go right here. Maybe he I mean, saves some moment, buyback at this they... point, but... Uh. Boots of Travel doesn't really do anything, I don't think. I yeah. suppose it helps it. Wow, oh, pretty hard. Oh. Those cleaves was... almost rng yeah. the Sand King there. One, 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 one more crit and Sand King's dead. Yeah. I think they... I mean, going for Boots of Travel is Sand nice King. and all, but... They... Sand King. Oh, he's gonna be okay. No ag except for an AA. Radiance middle yeah. tower is under attack. Just basically stays in fountain a bit longer than he wanted to, but let's get there. Is there I think boots of travel pickup is is not entirely wrong, but I think rapier would have been the better choice. Yeah, no rapier today apparently. I still think he's gonna get it. Because HGT, yes. I think HGT is kind of scared right now because why? How did they lose the last team fight? They should have won the last team fight, so. And they they, did they not. were fighting against so, Aegis on Ember Spirit. I think that's the one yeah. thing they can credit that to. It's like, okay, if Ember Spirit didn't have an Aegis, that goes a lot better. Because they killed him once, but when he respawned, he cleaned up. Winter, better be careful, man. You don't have a Ghost Scepter. No. no. Is this Weaver's doing some serious hurt. But they, they, they see the Weaver with the Agnum Scepter. Yeah. I guess that's the one. Uh, Night Stalker doesn't do anything in fights, but he gives, apart from give vision. Like, and yeah, it, it just in fights he's useless because you already know where the opposition is. Yeah. Well, I guess really the tide with the tide's often in the trees or trying to look for a blink rabbit, so maybe you see him. Mm, I think that's a dead Chen. Full stuff out. Full stuff, man. Are they, they going to chase for this? It looks like they want it. They want the Sanky. No, they're going to go for the Chen first. Chen pops a hand of God, but he's hit by the Ice Blast. There's your Ravage. Catches out all five. There's a double Ravage. This is a disaster for Orange. Fire Strike and oh, Yasira gets finished off by a Tide Chop and. He does have buyback, I believe, in just a second. He's got buyback, but uh, the chase is on. They want Winter. Radiance bottom He'd be out and under attack. not going to happen. Three dead. I think they just lost the game. <laughs> they should not have been chasing into HG there. Yeah, they, 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 they had no vision attack. up the hole. The Night Stalker was not in the, in, in the front line. It was just a stupid decision. Like, Chen already forced off and healed himself up. It was a stupid decision to go for the chase. Well, Morana could be in some trouble here. Has used leap, but no, no follow up. Oh, maybe there is CTY as well as the Sanky coming in. They get the hex on shock. Radiance bottom tower. Shock says buyback, but you don't want to be losing Morana for nothing here. And nice leap out, and that's going to be enough to keep Morana alive for now. Arrow going to blow up the Sanky. Morana pops a BKB just to stay alive. The chase is on though. That means no BKB from Morana when she buys back. GSMJ will 
Finish off the kill, so. Miranda's buyback, but now there's no PKB. They're going for the T4. They maybe go for the Raxus here. Or no, they're going to go bottom. No, ZSMJ, T4 is it is. Miranda's got to buy back and got to buy back soon. Dyer's structures are fortified. Yeah, it's, uh, at the moment, I'm having a slideshow at the moment. Perfect world servers, but yeah. I'm in the current not seeing anything. I just saw that Miranda died, so it's kind of difficult to say anything about He's it. Here. Oh, he almost gets destroyed by a crit there. The beetle may finish him off. He's going here with the beetle. He dies to the Weaver Swarm. Oh, it's all over. Ember Spirit on the sidelines, no buyback. GSMJ gets stunned up, but he doesn't care. He gets woken up immediately, and Max is on. No detection. Mirana's the last hope here, but without the Ember Spirit, I just don't see this working. GSMJ gets first down. He buys back. He's got no time left, so he can keep you back in as much as possible here. They do see CTY with a gem. Chase is on. One void. You're going to need a couple right clicks. The Yule's being used. The Urn Charge may finish off CTY. Pops a BKB. Just try and save his life. Insidious is chasing. He wants this Night Stalker at all costs, but he's not going to get him. It will come at the cost of his own life and he more... Nope, Hex is there as well. He's still chasing CTY. You're playing with fire here, son. He goes down. What are you doing, CTY? Perishes what? <laughs> they don't even kill Night Stalker. That is such a bad throw from CTY. He buys back oh. looking for the Sunstrike. What a pub star in action right there. That was awful, CTY. That was disgustingly bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess nothing new here. It's oh, God. C CTY, please. <laughs> I... That's too typ typical CTY, man. Not nothing to say, really. I'm actually going to try to <laughs> reconnect to the game, but I was having a slideshow through the uh, whole thing. Uh, <laughs> Slash, is, Slash has seen enough from CTY. He wants out. <laughs> He's done. I'm sorry, man. Dyer's That's enough. I'm just gonna You're probably going to miss the ending here. The throne's on 500 HP all of a sudden. The die side, then. Look at the focus going down. ZSMJ. BKB focus the throne. There's no glyph. GG's being called. The throne will go down. It's all over, but. CTY, please. That was. Just... It, 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 it's a miracle, that he, despite the, the plays that CTY made. I mean, he didn't even really make any good plays. I think it was just all ZSMJ. And... So this Andrea and XCT kind of carried really hard with the Tide and Weaver, yeah, but still, I think it's in the end Orange. They couldn't defend pushes. They, it was it was the biggest problem they had. They 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 got on the back foot once Necrobox came out and and the pushes started coming. So um, I think it was just a lineup problem in the end. They they played a good game, but support Night Stalker. I just hope I'm not going to see it in my next pub game. Yeah, that did not work out too well. I actually saw a support Night Stalker in one of my pub games earlier today. I messaged my friend who I who played it, and I was like, he, he was the entire time he was complaining about how bad support Night Stalker is. So I messaged him at the start of this draft and said, look, this is support Night Stalker. Watch and learn how to play it. And, well, I don't think he learned much. I think I think he was proven right that support Night Stalker just flat out does not work. It It's, yeah, it's very underwhelming. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, in the early game, it was decent because they couldn't punish it. But still, it's uh, just come late game, this hero is kind of worthless. And it would have been so much better if they had like an Earthshaker instead. So if they had an Earthshaker in this game, I, I think it would have been a much better draft. Overall. Yes. All and right. I do know that Insidious C actually plays a pretty good Earthshaker. So it's a bit of a shame. I think they should have gone for Earthshaker instead if they wanted to run Mirana Core. And at the same time, Mirana Core, I'm still not a big fan of it. Mirana gets picked up here and there because of her vers versatility. You can just run it as everything. But hard carry Mirana, it just, you don't have yeah. any steroids. So it's, it's in comparison to Weaver, for example, you can't hard carry a Weaver with a Mirana. It just it's, doesn't happen. All right. Well, that does it. It's a 1 1 draw in our two game series between HGT and Orange. Orange have another game up later today. They'll be taking on Invictus Gaming, which will be a much tougher opponent, guys. So. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. There's more Dota action coming your way from the WPC. We've also got the Summit Europe. There's a playoff match going on between Fnatic and Power Rangers. I believe that's being streamed over on the Beyond the Summit 2 channel with LD, so you can head on over there while you wait for the next series. It's normally like about a 15-20 minute break between series, so uh, WPC will continue soon. But for now, check out the Summit Europe, guys. I'm Gods. Joining me was Slash um, casting the WPC Dota 2 match between Orange and HTT. We'll be taking a break now, so stay tuned. More Dota action coming your way after a bit of a break.